The U.S. military has sent four of its naval destroyers to Alaska after spotting ships from China and Russia, quote, patrolling near the Alaska coast. A U.S. Northern Command spokesperson says the ships were not considered a threat. And Natasha Bertrand's uh, joining me now live from the Pentagon. Natasha, what more can you tell us about the possible purpose of this patrol and if indeed it did pose a threat to the U.S.? Yeah, Christina, this appears to have been an exercise, and of course, it is a yet another example of the growing military partnership between China and Russia. And what happened was roughly 11 Russian and Chinese vessels were operating very close to the coast of Alaska near the Aleutian Islands, according to the state senators Dan Sullivan and Lisa Murkowski. The U.S. then chose to respond, sending four U.S. Navy destroyers as well as planes to monitor the situation and track those vessels' movements. But ultimately, according to a spokesperson for U.S. Northern Command, those ships did not pose a threat to either the U.S. or Canada. And importantly, they stayed in international waters. Now, the senators uh, issued a, a statement that was a bit more concerned in its tone. And they said that this is really a, an example of Russia and China showing authoritarian aggression in the region. And they said that they had received a number of classifi classified briefings by U.S. military officials about the transit of these ships. Uh, near Alaska. Notably, this is not the first time that this has happened. Russian and Chinese vessels also performed an exercise off the coast of Alaska last year and were met by a U.S. Coast Guard vessel that was just on a routine patrol. So Dan Sullivan, who is one of those senators from Alaska, he did say that he appreciates that the response this time around was a bit more robust, of course, sending those destroyers as well as the reconnaissance aircraft to monitor the ship's activities. But we should note that the Chinese embassy also released a statement telling CNN that the activity there was not directed at any third party and had nothing to do with, quote, uh, the international uh, or regional situation. So obviously they're trying to downplay it here. The U.S. reiterating uh, the, the, the principle of freedom of navigation, emphasizing that they were in international waters, an important point the U.S. has to make here because the U.S., of course, conducts these kinds of exercises off the coast of Russia and China as well pretty routinely, Christina. That's great, great context. Natasha Bertrand there live for us from the Pentagon. Thank you. And fresh military tensions in the South China Sea as well. The Philippine government condemning China for taking what it calls aggressive action against a Philippine ship on Saturday. Manila has summoned the Chinese envoy in protest. Mark Stewart has the story. The Philippines is condemning China, accusing it of using a water cannon on one of its vessels as a, quote, dangerous and illegal practice. This video is from over the weekend, showing a Chinese ship purportedly firing water at the Filipino boat. Smaller in size compared to the Chinese Coast Guard ship, the much smaller Philippine boat was attempting to deliver supplies to a Philippine military installation in the South China Sea. Some context, these waters have been a source of tension between the two nations. Beijing claims it as its own, yet Manila feels it has a right to. A 2016 ruling from The Hague contends that Beijing has no legal basis to claim historic rights to the bulk of the South China Sea. China has ignored the ruling. The incident has prompted the Philippines foreign minister to deliver a complaint letter to the Chinese embassy on Monday. The United States is showing support to the Philippines, reaffirming its mutual defense treaty obligations. Australia, Germany and Japan have also weighed in, calling the Chinese actions dangerous and destabilizing. Mark Stewart, CNN, Tokyo.